Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and hopefully you're having an amazing day. We've got lots of AMD stuff to discuss in this particular video. If you are enjoying the content, be sure, of course, to subscribe to the channel and also ring the bell icon if you so wish. But first things first, I want to discuss just a small point regarding Cyberpunk 2077 on AMD GPUs. You may recall that um, just yesterday I did cover the fact that uh, CD Projekt Red have actually released the specifications that you require to run Cyberpunk with different uh, settings with ray tracing enabled or disabled depending. However, for AMD class GPUs there was no mention as to what type of ray tracing performance you would get with RX 6000 series and this is because we will not see ray tracing support at least initially uh, for the game's launch according to one of the developers over at uh, CD Projekt Red. Marcin said and I quote, not for release but we are working together with AMD to introduce this feature as soon as we can, end quote. So it is kind of frustrating, this is actually the reverse of course of the situation as we're seeing for Godfall. Uh, Godfall on the PC has ray tracing support for uh, AMD cards but not for Nvidia cards and you could raise an eyebrow and say that, hmm, Godfall is being heavily promoted by AMD. Hmm, Cyberpunk has been heavily promoted by NVIDIA. But you can also levy other particular theories as well, like maybe it just hasn't been optimized as much. Obviously, the PS5 uses AMD class uh, GPUs, so you can also argue that as well. Honestly, I'm hoping this trend is not going to be one we see consistent throughout the generation because that obviously is not going to do anything to help adoption of ray tracing. I think it's probably just that we are quite early into the release of RX 6000 glass cards. I mean, developers, to my knowledge anyway, have not had great access to the RX 6000 series. This is something AMD, of course, are trying to rectify, but um, I think it was Linux developers uh, some of them mentioned they didn't have access. I think it was uh, uh, Valve as well. They didn't have uh, RX 6000 cards. So obviously there's a very good chance that this is going to start to rectify itself as the generation increase uh, sorry, uh, proceeds. And hopefully that is the case because um, it is obviously very frustrating. Um, I also do wonder if this is going to have anything to do with the release timing for AMD's upsampling technology, which is going to be early next year. Of course, this is going to essentially compete with NVIDIA's DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling. And I do suspect that the performance hit of enabling ray tracing is going to be pretty substantial. The um, highest quality settings on uh, Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K is going to require an RTX 3080 Clash GPU, but there is no mention whether this is utilizing DLSS. And honestly, if this is native resolution <laughs> with all of the bells and whistles enabled and ray tracing, I would be shocked. I'm pretty certain that DLSS is going to be employed to make these frame rates playable. So possibly this is another reason that we're going to see the uh, slight delayed rollout for the RX 6000 series so that it can indeed be used with uh, AMD's DLSS like solution, which of course is uh, super sampling, or sorry, super resolution. Just real quick, I also want to discuss Turin. No, not Turing, Turin. It's, take the G off, <laughs> there you go. It's actually the successor to Genoa, the server range of processors from AMD. Genoa utilizes Zen 4 along with 96 cores, an increase from 64, and also DDR5 and PCIe5 technology but we already know the successor of this, and this is uh, going to be Turin. This has actually been confirmed by Executable Fix on Twitter, um, who is a pretty well-respected slash well-known leaker, but prior to uh, their announcement on Twitter, which is you know just recent, I believe it was Charlie over at Semi Accurate that first leaked this. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, because I do hate to attribute stories to the wrong person, but I'm pretty sure it was Charlie um, that actually leaked this, first of all. Either way, as you would probably imagine, we basically know Bupkus in terms of the details, other than it's a later version of the Zen architecture, which is not really helpful. This is more of a just for your FYI than anything else, but um, 
Anyway, I'm just throwing that in and also a small clarification from a video yesterday. One of my better sources actually got in contact with me regarding the RX 6900, nice, non-XT. You may recall that Asus, if you watched yesterday's video, actually filed a um, 6900 class card for their various you know, custom GPUs. And it was kind of a head scratcher because if you take a look at the number of compute units of the 6900 XT, 80, and then you look at the number of compute units in the 6800 XT, 72, and considering there's no real difference in memory configuration or anything else other than clock frequency, I think it's fair to say that it was a bit weird that this was the case. Like, how... Where is the where is the room in the product stack to sl uh, to slot in a sixty nine hundred non XT? According to my source, this is not the case. AMD are definitely not going to be releasing a non XT variant of the sixty nine hundred. So it's going to be the sixty eight hundred, sixty eight hundred XT, and then you guessed it, the sixty nine hundred XT. But of course. Um, we will see custom variants of those cards, which will be rolling out over the coming weeks for both the 6800 and 6900 Clash GPUs. And now I want to discuss Narve 22. These are the lower spec variants of the RDNA 2 Class GPUs with fewer number of compute units. We believe that there's up to 40 in these cards. And what's quite interesting is now we have further clarification to the memory configuration of the GPUs, the Infinity cache size, and also we have uh, the TDP figures. So we'll start out first of all with the TDP figures and the memory configuration. So we are indeed going to be seeing up to 12 gigabytes of memory, which does mean that we're going to be utilizing a 192-bit memory interface. We'll go more into that in just a moment because we have details on the Infinity Cache sizes as well. But Patrick on Twitter has also leaked the TGP figures of the cards. Uh, so there is Narve 22 XT and XTL. So this is probably going to be the 6700 XT and 6700 respectively. So we're looking at a TGP figure of 186 to 211 watts, and the lower end SKUs are going to be 146 to 156 watts. But skipping straight to the Infinity Cache and other memory configurations, it seems that Narve 22, 23, and 24 have had their Infinity Cache uh, structures leaked, and we're going to be seeing 192, 128, and 64 for the um, bus width of these cards, as you probably guessed by now. But the Infinity Cache size is going to be decreased to 64, 48, and finally 32 megabytes. Again, this makes perfect sense. If we have Let's pick on the uh, higher-end Narve 22 for a moment and say it has 40 compute units, which again matches up to the previous leaks. If you say it has 40 compute units, it's literally half the number as the um, high-end RDNA 2 cards. So we can probably guess that all you have to do is trim the number of, um, sorry, trim the amount of Infinity Cache and then you can make other nips and tucks as necessary to the memory configuration. And what we do know about the memory configuration of RDNA 2 is it doesn't seem to scale super well if you actually overclock the memory on the GPU. Guru3D and a couple of other websites have actually been messing around with overclocking the cards. And even at 4K, the GPUs don't seem to be that memory bandwidth constrained. In fact, in some instances, we're seeing just 1% or 2% increase in performance from drastically increasing the clock frequency of the RAM. This is actually a really good sign of the scalability of RDNA 2, which is obviously something I discussed quite extensively uh, before the cards launched, that I believed that the architecture was ultra-scalable for different configurations. And... Think of it this way, this is a really good sign of what we could see um, in terms of mobile class GPUs. It doesn't take a lot of uh, imagination to think to yourself, well, if we saw further cuts and tweaks for this architecture, and we saw um, you know, a TGP of like, mm, let's say the low 100 watt mark, and you pair that with Cezanne or another um, APU or maybe an Intel CPU if you prefer, 
you could make yourself a really nice laptop solution. And this naturally has the uh, other benefit too of not needing any intricate memory configuration. I think the 6700 XT and the 6700 are going to be incredibly important GPUs in AMD's repertoire against NVIDIA. Um, when you have uh, these cards and you can outfit them with like, let's say 12 gigabytes of memory, they are relatively cheap to manufacture, but also put out a ton of performance. Now, obviously NVIDIA are currently just about to release the RTX 3060 Ti and other lower class GPUs. And obviously there've been a ton of leaks of those cards, but AMD clearly needs to have its own, um, you know, comp competition. And these GPUs are shaping up to be very competitive. It seems that they're going to be essentially um, a replacement for the 5700, 5700 XT, but much more power efficient and also have features such as hardware-based ray tracing. I am actually really happy that these cards are coming out. I know that the 6900 XT and the RTX 3080 and those class of cards generally are what grabs the headlines, but they are also rather expensive. You know, if you're asking someone to cough up six, seven hundred US dollars plus for a card, it's not exactly a cheap ask. And given that 4K displays are not exactly plentiful at the moment, yes, some people are using their uh, PC on a um, like TV, 4K TV, but in terms of PC monitors, 1440p is becoming a lot more popular. So you can make a very good argument that you don't really need an RTX 3080, for example, on a 1440p monitor. Yeah, sure, it's nice, but it's not required. Um, so I'm going to be very happy to see yet more choice in this area when the 3060 Ti's and 3060's and the RX uh, 6700 and 6700 XT launch. I think that's going to be a really good positive for consumers. But anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. The normal stuff, if you have, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.